In this video, we'll give you our top five tips that are guaranteed to change the way you do endo from now on. What's up guys, I'm Zoe, I'm a foundation dentist working here in London. And I'm Ali, a final year dental student studying at Newcastle. And like most of you, I used to hate endo, but over time I grew to like it and it's mainly down to these top five tips that we're about to give you. So let's get started. So this first tip actually blew my mind when I was first introduced to it by an endodontist. So in my opinion, the most difficult part of an obturation with cold lateral condensation is getting all the accessory points in. They're so thin and flimsy that every time I try to put them in the canals, they either crimple up or they don't go down as far as I want them to. So to make the accessory points tougher and more sturdy, Ask your nurse to spray it with endofrost or far methyl and then put a thin coating of sealer at the tip. The endofrost makes it freezing cold and when you put the sealer on it, it gets stiff so you can easily slide it down the canal without it crimping up. When I started doing this, I found it so much easier to get the points all the way down the canal and I could fit way more in. So the second tip is to make your own surgical suction. So we all know you'll ideally use a small surgical suction tip to aspirate sodium hypochlorite, but you might not have these where you work. So instead you can actually make your own using the curly saliva ejector. You can use some scissors to cut them and it might be a little bit fiddly because the wire inside, but you can just twist and turn it and it will separate. You want to get this suction as close to the pulp chamber as possible so you can suction the hypochlorite before it leaves the pulp chamber. So there's less chance of hypochlorite leaking into the patient's mouth through the rubber dam. This third tip will help you when you're taking your working length radiograph. Especially with molars, there are multiple canals and when you take your working length radiograph, you could have three or four files in the canal and sometimes it can be tough to know which file is in which canal. An easy way to differentiate is by putting a different file type in each canal. So for example, for a lower molar, it can be difficult to distinguish between the mesiobuccal and mesiolingual canals. So put a K file in one and a headstrom file in the other. It doesn't matter what you put in the distal canal here because it would be obvious. Then take your x-ray and on the x-ray you will see the different flute shape on the files and you'll know which one is which. And if you don't have different file types or you want to differentiate between three canals for example on an upper molar, you could use a different file size instead. So our fourth tip is to use an ultrasonic scaler to its full potential. We could make a whole video on the uses of ultrasonics in endo because there are so many uses, but here are a few ways that it can make your life easier. Think of your ultrasonic scaler as a safer slow handpiece with much better vision. You can use it to remove dentine when you're searching for canals and it's much better than the slow handpiece because you remove dentine in smaller increments with much more control and you can see better since the tip is very thin, whereas the slow handpiece blocks your vision completely. It's also the best way to remove pulp stones and pulp tissue when using a combination of sodium hypochlorite. And lastly, you can use it to initially open up your canal orifice. So our fifth and final tip is to use the things around you wisely. So you know that endo takes long and patients have to keep their mouth open for a very long time. And the worst thing is they're constantly having to ask your patient to open their mouth wider. So give them a mouth bite prop to bite on throughout the endo. It makes it so much more comfortable for the patient as it gives them something to bite on and their mouth won't slowly close every other minute. Another thing to use around you is your rubber dam. Instead of constantly handing back the apex locator tip to your nurse when checking for working length, just clip it to the rubber dam, adjust the file, and then just pick it back up. This saves so much hassle and time. And finally, when you're using an endo ring with a sponge, instead of getting your nurse to put the glide paste or calcium hydroxide on a pad, ask them to put it on the edge of your ring so you can just coat your files with glide straight away without having to ask your nurse for the pad. So those are our top five endo tips and we hope you guys found it useful. Make sure you try them out next time you have an endo patient and let us know how it goes. We'd really appreciate if you guys gave us a like and subscribe so that the video goes out to more and more people. If you guys have any other endo tips, share it down in the comments below and we can all learn from that. Feel free to check out some of the other videos we have on this channel or some of the suggestions here. See you guys in the next video. See ya.